first of all, I would like to thank BOEM, the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, for adding this additional meeting on the Outer Banks. For those of you who don't know, this was not included in their original meeting plan, and thanks to the office of Walter Jones and the Dare County Board of Commissioners, they, on, upon the request, they added this. So Yay. please, yes, thank you very much. hard for people who don't live here to, to understand how far it is to go to somewhere like Norfolk or Wilmington, so we really appreciate that. Um, also, thank you to everyone in this room for being here, supporting this very important cause. There's a lot of great organizations that came together to make this happen. I'm Ivy Ingram with Not The Answer NC. I'm co-chair with Matt Walker, um, and this is a campaign of the Surfrider Foundation, but there are a ton of people in this room that made today happen, um, including the Comfort Inn and um, so many organizations and people that, that I, I won't take time to list them all. We're going to go ahead and get started with our, um, with our speakers. First, we have Lee Nettles, the Executive Director of the Outer Banks Visitors Bureau. And we have Briggs McEwen, the owner of Lisa's Pizza and Rodanthe. And we have three mayors. Um, Mayor Monica Thibodeau, oh, Mayor Pro Tem, Pro Mayor Pro Tem <laughs> from Duck, and we have Mayor Bob Edwards from Nags Head. We have Mayor Sheila Davies oh. from Two Level Hills, um, and then we have two students speaking today. We have Maddie and Aiden from um, Manio High School, so we appreciate them coming and representing the generation that this will really affect. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and give it over to Lee. Hello. It's pretty warm. It's, uh, it's nothing compared to the oil rig fire over there that's on the front of us. So anyhow, um, I, I do have some comments and uh, I appreciate you being here. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to actually be heard at a, at a public hearing. Huh? Um, the idea of offshore drilling for oil and natural gas has been a recurring topic in North Carolina for many decades. In 2005, 2009, 2014, and 2015, the Dare County Tourism Board expressed its strong opposition to offshore exploration and issued resolutions to that effect. The Tourism Board remains strongly opposed to offshore drilling. Unfortunately, the production of oil and gas carries with it a very real threat to the environment. It's unfortunate. If only we could just get it up out, uh, no detriment, wouldn't that be great? But unfortunately, it does carry that very real risk. For an area like the Outer Banks, whose local economy is almost entirely dependent upon tourism, and whose tourism is driven primarily by the visitor's expectation and enjoyment, of world-renowned, uh, unspoiled beaches and recre outdoor recreation, any threat to our shores and waters poses an existential threat to our community. To illustrate the importance of tourism to Dare County and the value of that tourism to the, to the state of North Carolina, please consider that every one in three Dare County resident is employed in a travel and tourism related job. That's 11,750 people in Dare County alone that rely on tourism. Wow. In 2013, Dare County tourism generated an economic impact of $953 million, ranking fourth among the state's 100 counties in terms of travel impact. County tourism generated $87.4 million in state and local taxes in 2013 alone. Tourism has proven to be powerful, but it's also proven to be reliable for us as an economic engine. In 2001, occupancy revenues since 2001, excuse me, occupancy revenues have nearly doubled and related jobs have grown steadily during that time too. No, exactly, no. <laughs> So, similarly, 
It's not just us, though. Similarly, tourism has shown consistent growth among the eight ocean contiguous North Carolina counties and for the 20 coastal North Carolina counties that are either on the ocean, on the intracoastal waterway, or on the sounds. In varying degrees, these counties also rely on tourism. Purely from an economic standpoint, jobs and dollars, the pursuit of offshore drilling does not make sense for the state of North Carolina. And it most certainly does not make sense for Dare County. The projections for oil and gas vary wildly. We brought some charts. They're back on the table there. I'd encourage you to grab them. They show the economic impact, the dollars generated by travel and tourism, based on real numbers from the Department of Commerce. And then we compared it to the projections for oil and gas from the study that was produced by the oil and gas industry. The projections, as you'll see, for oil and gas vary wildly. However, it's important to note today's tourism meets or exceeds the low and mid-level projections for oil and gas 21 years from now. I'll repeat, today's tourism, today's tourism meets or exceeds the low and mid-level projections for oil and gas 21 years from now. Why then, why then would we gamble with a proven industry chasing one that may or may not provide comparable impact 21 years in the future? Over the years, our culture and our heritage has been celebrated and has thrived with tourism at its base. Offshore oil and natural gas threatens this harmony and our way of life. Offshore drilling is a threat disguised as an opportunity. Advocates, advocates for oil and gas will argue that both industries can co coexist. That is one possibility. Just as it's also possible for spills to take place and completely devastate our environment, our economy, and our community, we have not asked for this. The Dare County Tourism Board remains vehement in its opposition to offshore drilling. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Briggs McEwen and I own Lisa's Pizzeria in Rodanthe on Hatteras Island, North Carolina. I've been there 17 years and have seen how much of a hardship it is living down there. It's a beautiful place but we endure many nat natural hardships, such as floods. We had a horrible flood three years ago. We had another flood last year. Um, I've had to rebuild my house, rebuild the restaurant. Uh, hurricanes, we have nor'easters, multiple nor'easters uh, every year. The beaches get eroded. Um, it's, it's just a real rough environment down there. An oil spill on the island, on the Outer Banks, anywhere in North Carolina, would grossly compound our hardships as well as everyone's hardship on the Outer Banks. And it would cause irreversible damage to our environment and our community. Our beautiful beaches are the top draw for the local tourism industry. The risk of drilling, fracking, and blasting do not outweigh the rewards. Please, please protect our beaches, our business, and our economy. That's for Hatteras Island. See our friends back there from Oak Oak Island. Yeah. As well as all of the northern beaches up here. We're all one big community. We all serve one, one common interest, and that is our beach, as well as many other things. Please don't drill in our ocean for a short-term short goal. Closed beaches leads to no tourism, leads to no pizza. And I love pizza. Thank you. 
thanks everyone for being here. It's a great crowd and um, it's for a huge, hugely important cause. I'm Monica Thibodeau, Mayor Pro Tem of Duck, and uh, my remarks are, as an Outer Banks business owner for over 25 years, a mother who raised children in these communities, an elected town of Duck official for over 12 years, and a concerned citizen, I am strongly opposed to drilling or exploration off of our coastline. The economic benefit is greatly overshadowed by the risk to our already fragile environment and to a local economy that thrives on tourism. Lee gave us the numbers and they speak for themselves. As a resident of the Outer Banks, we would bear the brunt of the risk and reap no financial benefit, while the lifeline of our economy would be consistently threatened. Experiencing even a minor mishap off our shoreline would cost our community hundreds of jobs thousands of lives would be gravely impacted. I also believe with the volatility of our currents, coastal storm systems, and periodic hurricane impacts, the Outer Banks has an increased risk of experiencing a significant accident or devastating spill. It is my strong opinion that alternate energy sources such as wind power should be pursued as our top priority. Pursuing alternate resources shows we are a community and a state that looks to the future instead of risking our award-winning coastline by short-sighted approval of offshore drilling. Okay. Say no. Thank you. Good afternoon. It's certainly good to have all of you here. I'm Bob Edwards, uh, Mayor of Nagshead. Our board has, over the last few months, passed a resolution that we have sent to BOEM uh, condemning seismic blasting and testing in, in our oceans. We've also, sent a, we've also sent a resolution uh, against drilling. No drilling for oil in our offshores. I was over at the other exhibits a while ago and I, I read one one of their posters that said trust, honesty, and respect. And I think it's time for that now and that we need to spell out what the truth is on seismic blasting. I see you sign over here where 138,000 dolphins and whales are uh, at risk from seismic blasting testing in our waters. Uh, Boeing came out with a, with a publication of last week saying, well, they're at risk, but that might be just because they might be disturbed or they might be bothered, and that doesn't mean they're going to be, the original word was taken, and taken doesn't mean they're going to be taken, but they might be disturbed or something. All we know is when they, they did some preliminary testing for uh, archaeological reasons down off our shores, a couple of days later we had two dead whales show up on our shores. So we, we need to come back to trust, honesty, and respect. We know that seismic blasting is going to be harmful to our, uh, to our mammals that are in the ocean, but they're also going to destroy the best tuna fishing in, in the East Coast, if not in the entire world. We, this, is, this is our lifeblood, fishing off of our coast, part of our tourism industry. Lee commented on the effect of our tourism industry and what, how many jobs that brings. And that's what we need to look at. What, what is the economic impact, impact of drilling offshore? We see these projections and their best, best projections uh, look like they are, it might be pretty profitable. But uh, when we look at what that's going to bring to us and in Dare County and LVX, that number is zero. We will have no effect from that. We don't have deep shore. Uh, deep shore ports to bring it, uh, ocean liners in, and we certainly don't want oil processing facilities here in Dare, in Dare County. Okay. So our economic impact is all negative. And what if there's a spill? These, these, uh, and I just looked at the maps again a few minutes ago, these leases they're talking about are right in the middle of the Gulf Stream right out there where we do our best tuna fishing. If we have a spill there, it might not only affect our banks, but it might go as far as Scandinavia. That, that Gulf Stream meanders in and out and moves up at a rate of, of up to six knots. 
it doesn't take long for oil to go a long ways in that situation. So I say, let's, let's have trust, honesty, respect, but let's get the truth out there. This is, offshore drilling is not for Dare County, it's not for the Outer Banks, it is something that we all need to stand united against. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I know you guys are getting hot, so I will keep these comments really quick. My name is Sheila Davies, and I am the mayor of Kill Double Hills. As an elected official, I have an obligation to look out for the welfare of our town, our residents, our businesses, and our visitors. Offshore drilling for oil poses significant economic and environmental risks to our community. While I acknowledge there may be potential gains associated with offshore drilling, the risk of economic devastation is far too great. Tourism is our economic backbone of the Outer Banks and of the town of Kittleba Hills. It is what connects us all. Whether you are directly working in the tourism industry or not, you benefit for tourism if you live in this area. As Lee shared the numbers earlier, we know the economic impact or the economic potential of offshore drilling does not overtake that of what we have, what we see from our tourism dollars. So it poses the question, why would anyone risk a proven economic engine like tourism for offshore drilling? On behalf of the town of Fiddle Hills, I express opposition to offshore drilling for oil and encourage BOEM and other stakeholders to advocate for the development of clean, renewable energy sources like offshore wind or solar. My name is Maddie Keniston and I'm an 11th grade student at Manuel High School. I'd like to note that Aiden and I's statements do not represent those of Dare County Schools. We are the future of the Outer Banks, not just my generation, but also the ones that follow. The proposal for offshore drilling threatens the future of this island we call home, whose time is already limited. Seismic blasts are the first destructive step in harmful offshore drilling, which will ultimately determine the future of not only half a million current fishery jobs, but also the future of this state. Seismic blasts, for those of you that do not know, are a destructive process that permits boats affiliated with oil drilling businesses to tow seismic air guns through the waters of the East Coast, blasting compressed air into the ocean in order to map oil and gas deposits. The inevitable and catastrophic repercussions of seismic blasting are life-changing, resulting in a domino effect. Seismic blasts are one of the loudest man-made sounds in the ocean, deafening and oftentimes killing marine life while also deterring them from their natural habitats. Do we want this to an effect? Do, they, do we want this to affect an already fluctuating fishing industry? No. 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 The beach is more than just a home away from home. It's our livelihoods. A significant amount of my classmates plan to take their life in the direction of fisheries after their after they finish high school, just as their parents and parents' parents have done since the colonization of this country. With seismic blasts causing fish to leave their natural habitats potentially demolishing both fishing and tourism industries, along with the environment, what will be left for my friends and our future children? Now is the time for us to be heard. We need to stop the proposal for offshore drilling before it gets the chance to destroy our future here on the Outer Banks. Together, we can stop the seismic blasting before the drilling begins off coast. Yes. Seismic blasts may be capable of silencing the voices of their, our marine life, but they cannot stop us from being heard. <laughs> I'm Aiden Sharon, and I'm a junior at Manuel High School, just like Manny. And um, I, our statements don't represent those of Bear County Schools. <laughs> Did you hear me? Yeah. You good? Okay. Yeah. Go for it. Tell it. I have lived on the Outer Banks for all six years of my life, and I can't think of a better place to be raised. I live alongside some of the most natural and pristine beaches in the world. To see them destroyed because some politician in Raleigh or Washington thinks it's best for the economy would make me lose my faith in a government that is supposed to care about the people, not money.
I know for a fact I'm not the only one that feels this way. People my age are furious. Right. We, yeah. we care about the health of our beaches and marine life. We aren't just beach bums. We take care of our beaches by doing beach cleanups. We work with marine conservation groups. Let's face the facts. According to the U.S. News and World Report, there has been more than 24 oil spills in the U.S. alone since Edson Valdez in Alaska in 1989. The likelihood of an oil spill is not a matter of if, but when. When one occurs, we would have nowhere to go, nowhere to enjoy ourselves, nowhere to live our lives. One spill would take all that away. Members of my generation are the future voters of this nation. And if our beaches are taken away from us, it will be the equivalent of stealing the childhood of every person who has ever grown up here or vacation as a child. How will that make you feel if you spend your life here? Took your first steps on the dunes, learned to swim, made lifetime friends, and then all of a sudden, a group of people 300 miles away decides that you don't deserve that place and they are going to destroy it. It's ridiculous. I can go ahead and tell you, we won't stand for it. We will fight to take that group of people out of office and I try and try to ensure that they will take no one else's childhood away. There are other sources of energy, wind, solar, and wave. It's all there, in the ocean and along the beaches. The best part of it is, each one leaves a far smaller wound in the environment. On the Outer Banks, the Coastal Institute is working on a method to harness the significant power of the waves, allowing us to utilize the ocean rather than what we might find below it. It's a new idea, but if we devote the same amount of time people devote to offshore drilling, some real results to bring coastal families a safe, environmentally responsible existence. Unlike methods used to harness oil or gas, a wave energy converter does not require a specific condition to operate and is able to move in a more dynamic way than is desired for oil harnessing. We've already seen the application of wind energy on the outer banks. In multiple locations, they're utilizing wind to help power many electrical expenditures. It is possible to set up a wind farm in the ocean, and because of higher and more constant wind speeds, it is actually more beneficial than setting one up on land. We don't need to destroy the environment in order to gain energy. We have the resources to do it a better way. We have to be loud and we have to be heard. My generation's voice will be heard. We will work tirelessly to take those who think of nothing more than profits out of office and replace them with a group that actually cares for the happiness and well-being of the people of this generation and the next 10 to come. We will not be silenced or seduced by new job opportunities because we know it comes at a cost that no sum of money can cover. Commissioners, I know Warren Judge is here with us. Thank you so much, Commissioner, for being here. Um, Beverly Boswell as well. Thank you so much. Um, this this is amazing, and it really speaks to our community. Thank you. Go, go, go.